Hey beloved, my name is Krista Pettiford. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about fasting for breakthrough. I'm gonna talk about what fasting is, how you can fast, what fasting does and what you can expect. I'm gonna share some resources from one of my favorite people on the topic, which is Jensen Franklin, and I will link his book. And there's a book you can purchase, but there's also some free resources that he has on fasting. Um, he's done several of them. I have done several of them, but he has really tapped into, he has a free devotional and things of that nature for that, that I'm going to share with you today. But I'm also going to share some of my personal stories of fasting and seeing breakthrough, seeing God answer prayer and really direct my life and change the trajectory of my life in different seasons through times of prayer and fasting. Some that I initiated and he graced me to do and others that I that he told me to go on and not to touch a piece of food in particular times because he wanted to do something which he then did and so I'm excited about this every beginning of year many churches go on a fast and so I know that many of you that watch my channel um, want some more information on fasting I pray that you would either join this fast with me or um, really tap into your uh, local church and join a fast, a corporate fast with your church. Um, but um, either way, and if you do not have a local church, I would tell you to go get one. But this is for you um, because sometimes we do fast, but we want a little bit more detail. So I hope that this blesses you. By the way, if you're new to this channel, I share prophetic words, prophetic encouragement, and prayer to help you navigate the seasons of life as you wait on God to fulfill his prophetic words and promises. So I want to encourage your faith so that you can keep going in the thing that God has called you to do. So let me get into this. I have written down some things and the first thing I want to talk about is what is fasting? Fasting is abstaining from food, abstaining from food. So it's not just what you give up but it's what you focus on so when you fast there's different type of fast there's daniel fast where you eat quote unquote no choice food you can drink only water you can um, drink only fruits and vegetables you can stay away from sugar and bread and you know dairy you can choose but really what you fast is between you and the lord uh, many times people um model their fast off of the fast of the Lord, like the 40 day fast that Jesus did before he launched into ministry um, full time, the 40 day fast in the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness away from people and things and he didn't have the busyness of everyday life. So he could really tap into that with nothing, no water, no bread for 40 days. And so I think the first thing is to focus on not only what you're giving up, but what God wants you to focus on. And and what I like to do is I like to use my journal and come up with a prayer focus and some requests. But what I've noticed over the years, at least 20 years of fasting, at least once, if not more, at the beginning of my walk several times a year and still now several times, but um, at the beginning, it was a lot of long fast. And what I noticed is that I would write things in my journal and not that that's not good, but as I surrender what I wrote to the Lord, what I was asking for, what I needed help in, the areas I needed help or I need um, answered prayer or whatever, God may speak to just one of those things or he may some, say something completely different. That is not one of my requests, but it is his direction. It is his instruction and it is his correction for that season. And it's loud and clear during that time. And so those are, that's one of the things that, um, that you can do. And another thing about what fasting does is fasting uh, when you do it with a focus on God and seeking God and not just abstaining from food. Many people fast. There's intermittent fasting, which people do all the time, um, which I have done, which is really good. Healthy. It helps you lose weight. It helps you stay healthy and it has so many benefits. But when you're doing a spiritual fast to seek the Lord, you want to make sure that you're 
not only staying away from food, but staying away from things that ignite your carnal mind, that get you thinking off of things. You want to take time to spend with the Lord. You want to ask yourself things like, what am I going to give up and what am I going to focus on? As I've already said, you want to ask yourself, when am I going to spend time with the Lord daily? Where am I going to meet with him? And how am I going to do that? How much time am I going to spend? Of course, I'm going to be with him, you know, all day because he's always with us. But that what is going to be my set apart sacred time that I'm going to spend with the Lord each day? If you already have a morning prayer, then that is fine. You may want to add more to it or get very specific in that one thing. But then the other thing is... Um, how I said how long and where and what is going to be the setup. Am I going to come with my journal, my Bible? Am I just going to sit before the Lord? Am I going to allow it to be spontaneous? But I'm going to set my intention to seek the Lord each day. And also I'm going to stay away, like I said, from things like maybe social media. Maybe social media is the only thing that you need to fast. Maybe it's television. Maybe it's doing all of that, depending on what you're asking the Lord for um, and how much you really need to get rid of the noise. Because when you fast in that way, getting rid of the noise, the distraction, the clutter, the voices, and you really get quiet and still before the Lord, it stills you. You go through a phase when you fast that your body is craving for the things. It's hungry for things. And then it comes into a place, a harmony, a peace that is sustained. Um, like Jesus was sustained in the wilderness. Like Moses was sustained. It comes to a place where it is being sustained by the less food or the no food. And then you are spiritually aware and in tune with your inner man, with your spirit. And you can hear God speak to you. So that's what fast fasting does. God is always speaking to us. He's speaking loud and clear. He wants to answer your prayers, but many times we're so distant from him. We're so filled with worry and fear and trying to figure things out on our own that we can't hear him speak to us. Fasting breaks yokes of bondage. It breaks us free from certain things. It heals our body. It sets our emotions straight. It does so many things things for us that, you know, all the prayer and all the work that we do and things like that, there are some things, Jesus said, that only come out by prayer and fasting. And sometimes you pray and you fast and you think, I don't know what I got from that, but it's later when you realize how much God did when you honored him by sticking to the fast that you said, by spending time with him, by the little things that that he speaks back to you, how things develop after your after your time of fasting. So that also happens. And so, um, as I said, I was going to share some fasting resources. So Fasting by Jensen Franklin is a book, and I'll link the description here. And you can also get it on, um, what is it called? You can listen to it online on Audible. And so I have both, Audible and this one. And so um, he talks about how fasting opens the door to a deeper, more intimate, more powerful relationship with God. And truly, that is one of the main things. So when I, uh, if you watched my video yesterday on prayer, if you were on the live or you rewatched it, um, you will know, uh, or if you listen to me talk about prayer, that God invites us. He calls us to a deeper relationship with us, with him. He craves a deeper relationship with us. He desires a relationship with each one of his sons and daughters. John 17, 3, which is one of my life verses, says, This is eternal life, that you would know you, that you would know the one true God in Jesus Christ, his son. And so that word know means to be intimately acquainted. And so with somebody like a husband would know a wife, like you would know an intimate friend. God wants you to know him. Eternal life is not going to happen in the by and by when you pass away. We have eternal life right now abiding in us as we walk with Jesus and we can access the benefits of it. And so he wants this deeper relationship with you. He wants to speak with you. He wants you to know him just as he knows you. So Paul prayed that he would know God even as he is known. And so God wants to have a knowing relationship, an intimate relationship with you and prayer because it allows you to hear God. 
uh, fasting because it turns down the noise and it allows you to hear God brings you into relationship because you can't have a relationship with someone that you don't communicate with or they're speaking to you and you're speaking to them but y'all can't hear each other right and so that's what prayer does and so this is a really good book and he walks you through the benefits of it the health benefits and all of that and so i read this over the holiday season to prepare and then if you go to his website which i will link as well i printed this it's 21 day fasting devotional and so it's each day and it has a um a journal pages to write and it just um it's for a 21 day fast and then he has a fasting guide and so and these are free resources the book obviously is not free but this is a free resource and i will link it for you as well and it talks about different um 21 day fast it talks about what a daniel fast is and the recipes and all of those things so i will uh it gives you recipes for 21 days uh breakfast recipes lunch and different things and and so it's real these are really good resources and so i always like to um gear up and just reread as i begin my new year fast last night i did some juicing and so i got my juice already i spent saturday evening chopping up vegetables and fruits and all of that and did a week's worth of juice so i'll be doing juice this week and then fruits and vegetables starting on monday and so i hope that that helps you um let's see did i talk about what i did talk about the type of food there's i did talk about juice fast and all of those things so what i want to do now is also i wanted to say that talking again about seeking the lord seeking the lord um and seeking his face not just his hand not just his provision in fast but god to seek his face is to seek his presence it's to seek out the very presence of god and so um when you write in your journal what you are fasting for and what your prayer is think of the one or few things that you really want from god out of your relationship there's a lot of things that i need um, prayer for there's a lot of things that i could be fasting for but what i realized over my life is if i have that hearing faith that galatians talks about the hearing relationship with god where i'm hearing him very clearly not only hearing but i'm able to listen and discern his voice and listen to him listen for him and know his voice when he speaks to me, then I don't have to doubt. I don't have to question. If I tap into God's very presence in that relationship, in that secret place, then God has everything I need. Psalm 16 says, you will show me the path of life. In your presence is the fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Isaiah 6 says, Starting at verse 1, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up. And his train, the train of his robe, filled the temple. And above him stood seraphim, each one had six wings. With two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one cried to another, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. The whole earth is full of his glory. And he goes on down and he says, Woe is me, for I am done, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. And, and the, they came, and they touched his lips, and they took away his inequity and purged his sin. And that is the type of presence where he fell out, and they were, and the, the, the angels were crying to one another, holy, holy, holy. And the presence of God was so thick and so manifest that he knew that he was a sinful human and that he needed God to clean him because he was in the presence of God's holiness. And so God wants you to have that type of intimate relationship where he can show you things like he showed Isaiah, who will go for me and who will I send? He said, here I am, Lord, send me. As we go on down, he begins to speak to Isaiah and God has some things that he wants to speak to his saints this year, some things that may deal with your life, but some things on the world stage, some things that he wants to talk about the spirit, some things, some assignments he wants to release to people that are bigger than you that you're going to do in secret and in private it's not always about you and your for me and my for no more but God wants to give you 
assignments to pray behind closed door for uh for governments and governors and presidents and kings and rulers. He said, um, we bind and we lose. We tear up and we build up. When we, when he gives us power to intercede, he gives us power to, to tear down and to build up by our intercession. And it won't always have to do with you. He will send you on assignment in the spirit. I know what I'm talking about because I've been there before, which brings me to the other thing that I want to share. And that is some of the things that God has done for me. I'll share just two briefly. The first one I'll share is I was on a fast and I was, um, I was, young in the Lord and I was just coming into ministry and I was also just coming into my career in information technology and it was probably 2002. That's how far long ago, long ago it was. It was two decades ago and I was on a fast and it was just a fast. As I said at the beginning, I did a lot of fast on my own because that's where I was always seeking the Lord through fasting and praying and um, I was on this fast and I would go home on my lunch break because I worked close to lunch and I was just seeking the Lord. And prior to that, I had planned out um, to go back and get my second degree. I had just got my first associate's degree in computer science information technology. And then um, the Lord um, on this fast, he's, and I was signed up for school. I was signed up for a college that I had a friend who worked at this college, National University in my local city, and she rearranged the schedule for me to to fit my schedule because she had the power to do that in her um, position. So that, and I went in and visited her and she was like, girl, where do you need your classes at? I'll hook you up. I'll make sure that whatever classes you need, that's how the schedule's gonna go. So that's how much favor I had with her, right? I go on this fast and the Lord says, would you trust me if I told you not to, if that I didn't want you to go to school, if I didn't tell you what was next? And I, hear, I heard him speaking. It was like an audible voice. I'm driving in my car and and I hear, I know it wasn't an audible voice, but that's how loud I could hear him. Because when you're fasting and when you're seeking the Lord, not just abstaining from food, you hear his voice clearly and he gives you direction, correction, and instruction. And so he said, would you trust me if I told you that I didn't want you to go to school and I did not want, I didn't tell you what was next. And I began to cry because I had my whole life figured out. I was a young mom. I was going through a divorce. Um, I would get, we would get back together several times after that but at that point I was like I wanted to go back to I wanted I had just graduated from school I had taken a job in IT and I wanted to I wanted to climb the corporate ladder because I that was what I thought I was going to do I thought I had found my calling in my career and I was you know you want your work you're trying to figure it out when you get a divorce who am I and so this is what I thought I was going to be doing even though God was setting a path in ministry and he said would you trust me and I I remember having to and I said yes Lord crying and I remember having to call my friend and he told me Holy Spirit said you cannot tell her you cannot conform with flesh and blood. You just have to tell her that you're not going to be able to go and thank you. And it hurt me to not be able to explain to my friend. And our relationship was not the same, but we weren't. She wasn't. She was my friend from way back in the day. So I was this radically saved person by this time. And um, we had reconnected. And, you know, we're close again, but not as close because sometimes there's seasons when the Lord will set you apart. Um, and from from your friends that you once knew as your born again creature, but we had such a close relationship that we still connected, but we couldn't walk together in everyday life. And so I couldn't say anything more to her. The Lord said, you can't explain this because she won't understand. And so I had to say that. And two years later, I was on another fast and um, the Lord spoke to me and he told me to go to seminary. It was two, two, two and a half years later that the Lord told me what was next. And so I trusted him. I didn't go. I focused on serving and raising my kids in the church and all of that. And a lot of wonderful things happened during that time with my children and serving the Lord. And it wasn't about ministry. It was just about going to church and being there with my kids. And 
um, I wasn't in ministry yet. And then he told me to go to, and I was serving, I was helping people and I was going to prayer and I was part of the prayer team, but I wouldn't, I wasn't leading a ministry and I was just there to serve the women who had been a part of my life when I was walking through a hard season. So I was not, I didn't even think, uh, I wanted, I didn't even want to be in ministry. That was not my path. Um, not in a bad way. It just wasn't something that I thought that I would be called to in such a way as I have been over the years. And so he called, he told me to go to seminary. Um, and I went and it was during a fast. He told me which seminary I said, Lord, that they don't have a seminary, this church that was in our local town. And he said, they do too. Go look it up. And so I commenced to go look up another one. He said, no, I said something else. And so I went to the church's page and there was a link to the seminary. So I signed up for seminary. I cried my first night and go in my car, going into the location because I was like, here, I just gone through a divorce um, and you want me to go to seminary. That was probably around 2006. And I just said, you know, my life is, you know, why would you, there's other people that you could speak to, but if you go with me, Lord, then I will go. I will do this, but you have to go with me. And he went with me that first night and we walked through seminary together. Um, with uh yeah it was it was quite an experience it was a good experience but it was what he wanted for me to do and um he was with me and then i got called to lead women's and then to lead prayer and i did not know that that was going to happen but god knew but now i want to talk about one experience where the lord had spoken to me um and said pray now he would, I would see things um, in the spirit and still see things when I'm fasting about wars and rumors of wars and things like that. But I remember uh, one time there was an election and I'm not, I don't lean politically toward things like people do. I tend to stay on the Lord's side and stay neutral and walk with truth. Um, but the Lord told us, told me I was doing something. I was, I was home after church on a Sunday and, um, he said, don't put another piece in your mouth of food. And I said, okay. And he began to download to me what he wanted me to do in my church at the time. My old church was huge at the time, um, in the early 2000s. And I went to my pastor and the Lord gave me this whole idea for getting people to vote. And we signed so many people up to vote. And it was because some things that were for Christians before it got really political in the early 2000s. It was just uh, some things that we were wanting to see for Christians, um, uh, this is, yeah, again, before it got polarized or before there was racism and in all those things, it was just about the Christian vote. And we signed people up and we prayed um, for the elections and for the president uh, at that time. I will not get into all of that, but it turned around and the Christians needed to vote and God knew and he put us on that fast. And I was young. Again, I don't even think I was in ministry. I was just this young um, woman with this zeal for the Lord who was displaying these prophetic gifts and stuff and wanted to do things. And so God gave me favor and opened up doors. I would share other stories, but that's one I could think of. I would share some, I remember when Egypt, uh, had some issues and there was fire and there was an over takeover in the military and all of that. I can't remember what year that is now, but I called it out in the spirit when we were on a fast at um, church. I called it and I said, I see fire and all these things the Lord showed me. And I think it was the that Monday, everything happened that next week, everything that I had prophesied there. And it wasn't because I knew or I was seeking, it was because the spirit of the Lord told us to pray. He told us to pray about certain things and um, prophetically speaking. And so you can stand in the gap for things that have nothing to do with you, but the Lord will give you an assignment. He will lift you up in the spirit and cause you to see things with your spiritual eyes that you couldn't see when he can trust you to intercede. You don't have to be 
you don't have to broadcast it. This is years later, so I'm sharing some details now, but you don't have to broadcast it. It's a it's a secret, a covert. Is that how you say the overt, covert operation? It's a sneak operation. God needs people who can go in like snipers and tear things up. And you don't, you may not get any accolades and nobody may acknowledge you this side of heaven, but God knows he can trust you to pray some things up, to build up and to tear down in the spirit and that you will see kingdoms and kings and principalities. Um, you're God's hands and feet and his eyes and his ears and his mouthpiece in the natural realm. He said, I'll do nothing unless I show my servants the prophets. And we all have the ability to prophesy because the spirit of God is in us and the witness that the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy or the spirit of prophecy, the Bible says, is the testimony of Jesus Christ. And so when Jesus is stirring in you and you hear him speak to you and you hear his voice, he will begin to speak to you and give you assignments that you um, would say, who am I? Just like like Isaiah said, who am I? I'm a man of unclean lips and uh, an unclean tongue. And um, but God cleaned him up and then he could say, here I here am I send me. Jeremiah said, I'm just a youth, but God said, no, you, I've made you a prophet to the nations. And so God wants to take you while you are waiting on God to um, work your promises and your prophetic words out. He has an assignment for you to help somebody else get theirs worked out. And so I believe that as you seek him above all else on this um fasting time, you can trust him. You can trust God with the things just like he entrusts you. You can trust God to to work your things out while you do some work for him in this season. And so I pray that this bless you. And he would never ask you to do something that's going to take you away from the things that he's already entrusted you to, your current duties and responsibilities that you're supposed to do. But he may ask you to shift focus or take on a new assignment and let something go. But he's not going to ask you to neglect your family. He's not going to ask you to do something uh, like that. So you can trust him and you can trust that as even if you don't know how something is going to work out just like I said that God if he leads you to it then he will lead you through it if he calls you to do it then he'll make sure that you are able to do it he'll give you the grace to do it so I hope that this blesses you and I hope that you will fast with me and download some of these um some of these resources or get the book that I've shared with you. I'll leave the resources there in the description and um, I will see you throughout this 21 day fast. God bless you and I can't wait to share and to hear the testimonies of what God does in your life and to share what he does in my life after we go through this fast. God bless you until next time.